This episode of Hoochos is brought to you by Spider Farmer. Welcome back to Hoochos. Today on Hoochos, we're going to build, set up, time lapse, and discuss this. This is a DIY hydroponic cloning and propagation device. Today I'm going to show you how to set this up as well as another method for cloning and propagating. And there's also kind of a twist at the end where we look at whether this is worth your time and effort compared to some simpler techniques. Okay, so the things you'll need, a storage tub with a lid. Any storage tub will do really. The reason I'm using these ones is because they're food safe, just to keep the internet happy really. Also, it fits really nicely with my pre-existing propagation domes. So if you can at all get your container to fit a propagation dome like this, perhaps have your propagation dome with you when you're purchasing a container so you can choose the right container, it's gonna give you a really nice end product. Some other things we'll be using today, a drill with a hole saw. Now the hole saw I'll be using is one and three quarter inch or 44 millimeters. The reason we're going to need a hole saw is because we'll be using these. These are called clone collars. They are a pre-made collar we will be utilizing to hold our plants in place on top of this system. Now, yes, you can make these yourself. It is very easy to do. You just need to find some PVA, polyvinyl acetate matting, yoga matting, essentially. The reason I'm using these is because they are actually relatively cheap. I'll link them in the description. And they are purpose-made. Obviously, you can use something like a puck, which is the polyvinyl acetate matting. But for those who want a really easy option and keeps the system looking nice and neat. Adjust your hole sizing to the size of your clone collar. To root out the plants, I'll be using Clonax. Clonax is a PGR, it's a plant growth regulator. It's a rooting agent. The active ingredient is IBA, indole-3-butyric acid. Essentially, it is, it is an auxin, a plant rooting regulator, and we'll be dipping our cuttings into it before we put the cuttings into the system. This is going to encourage root growth from the bottom of our plants and it is going to speed up the rooting process. I'll also be using some hydroponic nutrient and pH up or down depending on what your water is. I'm also going to be using some air stones. These are 50 millimeter air stones and I'll put a link in the description below to where I got them. And I'm going to be using an air pump. This is the AP750R and it is a four watt air pump with dual outlets. It will push air out onto both of these stones. This next part is optional, but but I'm going to also be using a 3D print that I designed myself for these air stones. This is just going to hold the air stones in place in the location that we want them to be sitting within the container. To glue these air stones in place, I'm gonna be using a hot glue gun and some glue sticks. Okay, so let's get started. We need to drill out the holes in the lid on the container. So we're going to plan out our plant spacing I'm not going to overcrowd this at all. I'm not trying to get masses of plants. I'm only trying to clone a select few plants. So I'm just gonna take a note of where the lid is sitting. That's perfect, because it's actually left a watermark there. I'm going to place out my clone collars so that we've got it nice and evenly spaced for our plants. You can definitely get more plants into this area, but it does get overcrowded and I want them to be able to breathe. And once you're happy with them, we can drill out those holes. So start in forward and in reverse. Okay, so you can see how it's laid out in kind of like a 10 piece domino effect. We're actually going to aim for having our air stones directly below the center spot. This is going to give us a nice even distribution of air. If you don't have a 3D printer or access to a 3D printer, you could just use, this is just a used bottle of distilled water, but you see where I'm going here. Take the lid off any bottle and your air stone will fit in it. So rather than 3D printing this, 
you could just glue the lid of any bottle to the base and it's gonna hold it in place. What I would recommend, because I have 3D printed these, I've made slits in the side of it. When you drop this in, the collar of the airstone holds it off the actual print and these slits let the air out. So if you were to use a bottle top, you would drop your air stone in, but the lid may stop the air escaping from below. So I would just slit this with a saw or something you can cut through this with so that the air can escape out when it's sitting on top of it. So I'm just going to place these into our container directly below the center hole of our pattern. And that'll look like this. And then we can glue them in place. There we go. And those are our air stone holders glued into place. So at one end of this container, you're going to want to drill a hole for the four mil tubing that's going to connect to our air stones. Usually the hole saw hole will be about that. So I'm gonna drill just the internal part and we're gonna do it in the bottom container as well. We wanna be able to remove our lid without removing our, our air stones. Do it just below where the lid's gonna be. You don't really need to worry about the water coming out because we're not filling this all the way up. We're only gonna have it half full. So drill out your holes. And we can feed through our air lines. So they'll just feed through the holes like so. We can connect up our air stones. And internally, it will look like this. We can add in our clone collars, like so. And that is our whole system built and ready to set up. Okay, so for the hydroponic nutrient, we're going to do a very low strength. 2.4 is about the starting point for fruiting plants. For lettuce and leafy greens, you wanna aim for about one to 1.5. We're cloning and propagating, so we wanna aim for between 0.5 EC and one EC. Lower is safer because you can always add more. I'm just gonna go straight for one EC. So for my nutrient, I have 20 liters of water here because we've got a 30 liter container and I don't want it full to the top. I'll explain why in a second. So I've got 20 liters of water. My nutrient at full strength goes to 2.4. I've got 10 grams of nitrocal and I have 10 grams of the other elements. In there is the diamond spec tea. And I'm just going to add hot water to both of those to mix them up. And I'm gonna pre-adjust my pH as well. So I wanna adjust my pH up one factor. So it will depend on the strength of your pH adjuster. So just read the back directions for the appropriate ratio. And this is gonna change depending on how your nutrient affects your water anyway. Mix that up. Okay, let's see where we're at. We have a pH of six, which is perfect. We have an EC <laughs> of one. All right, I'm happy with that. Okay, so before we fill it up, you're gonna wanna move your system to wherever you're gonna put it in place. I'm gonna have my system here. We can remove the lid and we can fill it up. So notice I'm not filling it up all the way to the top. The mechanism of action is actually the air bubbles causing the water droplets on the surface to escape the surface tension and jump up away from the surface of the water, delivering tiny droplets of nutrient solution to the roots of the plant or the sections of the plant that we've cut that we want to root out. So I'll show you what I mean. So if I bring my light, where our water is throwing off tiny droplets of water, which as the bubbles break the surface tension are thrown up. These are the mechanism of action by which the nutrient solution is going to be delivered to the base of the plants. And this is going to provide an extremely well oxygenated source of nutrients, as well as allowing the plants to root out a lot faster and once rooted, have an extremely oxygenated source of nutrients. And you can see from the base, how the water is spraying up against where our plants will be 
in our clone collars. I just place that on top and we can take cuttings from the plants we want to clone. Here I have the capsicum plant that I want to clone. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a cutting. First, I'm just going to pour some of my Clonex into a dipping tray. You want to do this because you do not want to dip the cutting directly into the IBA solution because it will react and ruin the rest of the gel. This is what we want to take. It's kind of growing out of the armpit of the leaf and you want to take the cutting on a diagonal as close to the stem as you possibly can. And we're immediately going to dip that into our IBA gel, like so. We can take a clone collar, surround the stem with it. And you kind of want to allow enough for the stem to root out as well. So that's probably perfect. And depending on your leaf size, I would just trim the leaves. So we'll just trim the leaf like that. And this is going to reduce the surface area of the leaves and that is going to reduce transpiration rates which is going to lessen the stress on the plant so we add that in to our propagation device and we can continue taking cuttings okay so here i have a few more plants that i want to take clones of i've got some thyme i've got some rosemary some mint and some basil the basil is the same as the capsicum. It will have, it'll have little plants growing out of the nodes and we can just take cuttings of those. Like so. With the basil, I'm gonna remove the big leaves. These guys will root like nothing else. There we go. For the herbs, I'm just gonna take a stem cutting. Just the main stem and we're gonna clear about an inch of the base so that we can root out that part below the plug. Rosemary, mint, thyme. And these are eggplants that have been absolutely destroyed by pests because they're outside, but wouldn't mind a head start on some eggplants. So if we take a couple of cuttings like this, we may just get lucky. So we'll just take half the leaf off, wrap it in our clone collar. I'm also gonna take the flowers off them. And there, there are all of our clones, all ready to root out. So we can put the propagation dome on top. We'll close the vents, place it underneath. This, this is the Spider Farmer SF600. It's a 60 watt grow light and it is perfect for seedlings, cloning and propagation, leafy greens, anything that requires a lower par than a flowering and fruiting plant, this is ideal for. When Spider Farmer reached out to me to sponsor this video, it was a no brainer because I love this light. I've used it for the propagation of seedlings in multiple videos, as well as the growing of leafy greens in small indoor hydroponic systems. This light is extremely versatile, which means that it is extremely good value for most people entering into the indoor growing space. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can get it and above I'll link my review on it and I thought for an interesting little comparison we can take some of our faster rooting plants like the mint and the rosemary and we can stick them into some grow media and see how they respond compared to our cloning and propagation device so this is just 60 cocoa 40 perlite and I'm just watering it in with exactly the same nutrient that I used in the cloning device. And I'm gonna put that on my propagation shelving unit. So let's set up the time-lapse cameras and see how they grow.
and we have a look at that result. So the SF600 Lite performed fantastically throughout the grow. We've got a ton of roots coming off most of our herbs, except for our rosemary. The basil and the mint and the thyme all performed really well in this system. The capsicum performed extremely poorly. And as you can see over this side, where the eggplant was, I've had to remove them because they had spider mites on them, which is really disappointing. I've had a lot of problems with spider mites lately, but they were rooting out. I don't actually need any capsicum anymore because I have had so much trouble with them this year that I went and overplanted for the seeds and I now have an excess of capsicum, but it would have been nice to have the system perform. And the nutrient solution is pretty cold. I don't think that the temperature was a problem. I'm just not sure why some of the plants didn't root. I've made systems like this before and I've really not had problems with plants not rooting in them. These are the results that I got. I just don't know. And I really want to recommend this system because of the amount of effort that's involved. I can really only recommend it to people that want to grow clones of easy to clone plants that need it for a specifically a medialess environment because at the exact same time that I cloned all of these plants, I placed these cuttings from the exact same plants into a 60-40 cocoa perlite mixture. I would actually say that these plants performed better. You can see here that the basil has rooted out the bottom of the cocoa perlite and our rosemary is also rooting. The rosemary performed better in this cocoa perlite media. Our thyme has grown nicely and our mint as well. As you can see, it's completely taken up the container that I put it in. And all I've been doing to these is topping up this base with a uh, hydroponic nutrient, uh, half strength, sometimes full strength, and they've just thrived. Would I recommend this system for cloning? It depends. This is way cheaper and easier and kind of works better. So maybe we should do a video on cloning into cocoa perlite. That's what you saw me do to these plants and then put them in some cocoa perlite. <laughs> so in theory, like it works well when it works. And for some people, this is going to be ideal. For the majority of people, I think you're gonna be better off using other methods of cloning and propagation. I do love the idea of this system and I love the system, but when put up against something like the cocoa perlite and the ease of which they were to maintain, I, uh, yeah. Anyway, um, a bit of a strange ending and thank you for watching this episode of Huchos. I'll link the light in the description of the video as well as a discount code so that you can pick one of those up if you like it. Happy hydroponicking, and I'll see you next time <laughs> on Who Shows. <laughs>